infamous Quebec murderess. For centuries, the ghost of Marie-Joseph Corriveau has been haunting the cultural consciousness of Quebec, Canada. To many, the legend of La Corriveau is a ghost story of a woman hanged for murder, her corpse put on display as a gruesome warning. But the story of La Corriveau and the gibbet in which she was hanged are based on real historical events, and after over a century away, the actual cage has made its way back home. Welcome to Spider Stories. We bring you true stories every other day that are guaranteed to send chills down your spine. From stories of restless spirits to encounters with otherworldly beings, you will be captivated by these pulse-pounding narratives. So buckle up because these stories will keep you on the edge of your seat. Marie-Joseph Corriveau was born in 1733, in what was at the time, a country called New France, which, by the time of her death, was controlled by the British. The British forces were completely unorganized. There were many tensions because it was a new government, and the people weren't happy with what was happening. Ultimately, Corvo would become a dire symbol of this frustration and disorganization. At the age of 16, she was married to a local farmer, who died in 1760, leaving her alone with three children to care for. However, Corvo quickly found another husband, marrying Louis Etienne Dottier, another farmer from her parish, less than two years after the death of her first husband. But he wasn't long for the world either. Dottier turned up dead in January of 1763. By that time Corvo and Dottier's marriage was the talk of the town, and not in a good way. Her father, Joseph Corvo, had a number of very public fights with Dottier over property and business dealings, and Marie had petitioned, unsuccessfully, to leave her husband, on the grounds that he was physically abusive. So when Dottier was found dead in their barn, initially thought to have been the result of being kicked in the head by a horse, the rumors about town soon turned the focus of the investigation to murder. Dottier's wounds were re-examined and determined to have been caused by something closer to a pitchfork than horse hooves, and both Joseph and Marie were accused of murdering the man. After an initial trial before the military, Joseph was found guilty of Dottier's murder and Marie was found guilty of being an accomplice. But when Joseph was sentenced to hang for his crimes, he cracked, telling the court that in fact his daughter had committed the murder, and that he hadn't turned her in only because trying to keep her from the gallows. When questioned about this shocking turn of events, Marie finally admitted to killing Dottier with a hatchet. Likely embarrassed by the initial wrongful conviction, and possibly influenced by fresh questions about her first husband's death that were now being whispered about by locals, the British authorities in charge of the province at the time held a speedy, cursory second trial. It was a military trial, because they were not equipped to hold a civil trial, they surpassed their given powers because the king in England did not give the final approval. They sentenced Marie not only to hang, but for her body to be gruesomely displayed in a metal gibbet as a warning. She was hanged in April of 1763, and her body was placed on public display for about five weeks in nearby Point Levis. They wanted to give an advertisement to the population with this hanging in the cage, it was unusual because this tradition didn't exist anymore in France, but the British still used it. Eventually Corabo's body, metal gibbet and all, were taken down and buried in an unmarked grave in a Point Levis churchyard. And for almost 100 years, that's where she stayed, her story slowly taking on mythic dimensions. Fueled by her sensational, shocking trials and not a small amount of reactionary demonizing of women, the story of La Corabo evolved, sometimes gaining supernatural flourishes. As the legend grew over the next several decades, her number of dead husbands rose to seven and there were whispers of witchery, or that she was descended from a famous poisoner. Her popular image became a macabre reflection of her final fate, a skeleton in a hanging cage that would appear to terrorize residents. People tried to understand that event, so they made stories. Then in 1851, the gibbet in which she was buried, her cage, was unearthed from the churchyard, she was not in the cemetery. This discovery no doubt injected the folktales with even more life. Versions of La Corvo began to appear in Canadian literature, and soon she had become something of a cultural institution. But her cage wouldn't remain in Canada for long. Within months of being dug out of the ground, the gibbet was exhibited in Montreal, Levis, and Quebec City, before ending up in the hands of P.T. Barnum, who put it on display as a curiosity in his New York Museum in August of 1851. 
it had a simple plaque that read, from Quebec. From there the cage passed to the Boston Museum in Massachusetts, around 1869. According to dates provided by Tepen, which have only recently been unearthed, the cage then passed to the Essex Institute in Salem, Massachusetts, around 1899, and was put on display at least once around 1931. In the early 2010s, members of the Levis Historical Society rediscovered it at the Peabody Essex Museum, after it had been all but forgotten for most of the 20th century. Working with the museum, Corabo's cage was repatriated to Levis for a special exhibition in 2013. According to La Hikanen, the directors and trustees at the Peabody Essex Museum then donated it to Musée de la Civilisation in Quebec, where it remains to this day. The legend of La Corvo is still a well-known folktale in Quebec, and versions of her story have been turned into a number of books, operas, and more. But thanks to the return of the gibbet in which she met her final fate, the legends and stories are hardening into cold history. In fact, Corvo's gibbet is still being tested and studied to see if they might even be able to pull DNA from it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more amazing stories.